Hey, this is Rob Thompson with Sports Business Podcast interview with influencers. And Chris Berry, you are an influencer, sir. So welcome and thank you for joining me. You are too kind, Rob. An influencer. I've, I guess I've finally arrived. But, uh, well, you know, I, I was so glad when when I saw your email. You know, I get eight million of those LinkedIn group membership emails, and yeah. I delete them all. You know, but I saw yours, and for whatever reason that day, I clicked on it and I followed it to your your website and read about your model. And I, I was, and then subsequently, of course, we talked, and I was I was really blown away. I thought we struck up a good rapport, and uh, I'm super excited to be uh, your guest today. So thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad I made it through the uh, delete list. <laughs> well, so a little bit about you. I mean, you, you pretty much started, uh, you've been in the IT um, world for a long time, a little bit in the financial world. Um, you started this company about six, seven years ago. You're the CEO and founder of Powerhouse Gym, uh, dot com, uh, powerhousegm.com. And yeah, um, don't say powerhouse gym. They don't like there's there is actually a real powerhouse gym and that's not uh, that's definitely not us. I know I, I there was one in the area I grew up in. So it was a little faux pas on my end. But powerhouse GM, I think it's an unbelievable platform. We talked about it. It's different. It's unique. Um, so just talk about why you started the business. Where did you see the need in the market? So um, I've always loved football, like way, way back to when I was really little. And like you, I, I played in college, though I was far from a Hall of Famer like you are at New Haven, Rock. Oh, boy. And I've always, been, <laughs> I've always been fascinated with um, how NFL teams are built. How do they go from bad to good and back again? And I've been following the NFL draft since the mid-'80s when I was in college. It's like Christmas morning to me. Mm -hmm. And I knew I'd never have a chance to be a real NFL GM, but I wanted to simulate the experience. So I created rules for a game or simulation or whatever this is back in 1996. And I ran my own pretend NFL team on an Excel spreadsheet for years just to see how well I could do. Super nerdy. <laughs> I signed free agents during real life free agency. I draft along with the real NFL draft. And I'd have to cut my roster to 53 in September just like the real teams, following all the same rules. And there's this passionate interest in this aspect of the NFL – the draft was the highest rated show on TV last spring after Game of Thrones, and that's nothing new. Yeah. I've watched it grow from this secretive little event into a huge annual showcase. 250,000 people attended in Philly earlier this year. And as I learned about the billion-dollar fantasy sports industry, I was stunned that, that nobody else was doing this. They just shut down. Fantasy football would just shut down for half the year. Well, football fans' engagement with the NFL never stops. Mm -hmm. It's year-round, and so is our game. And when I think about the market opportunity here, which was your original question, mm -hmm. I think of how EA Sports launched their head coach Madden spinoff over a decade ago and sold half a million copies over three years. That's the closest thing I've ever seen to what we're doing. They made about $20 million with it. It wasn't even that good, and the market has grown a ton since then. So when did you have that aha moment? Where Was it something, were you driving in your car? Were you, you know, that you said, hey, I, I know this is something that's going to work. And I want to take what I did as a hobby and apply it to a business. Yeah. So this is one of the easiest questions that people ask me. My background is in enterprise software sales, mostly for startups, one of which was acquired by Microsoft. So I spent a couple of years there. Around the time I left Microsoft, you know, I was, I was looking for my next opportunity, not sure what I was going to do, and I stumbled on this statistic called approximate value on the stats website, profootballreference.com. I always like to plug them because they were so important here. But it's a super complex calculation that they came up with that actually does a really nice job of putting an objective numerical value on a player's performance in a given season. So when I saw that, my first thought was, wow, now I have a way to apply a score to my virtual team and measure how I'm doing. But my second thought, the aha moment, was, wait a minute, if I have a way to generate a score for virtual teams, maybe this can be a game that anyone can play, and maybe it can be a commercial application. The advances in web technology, it had to be possible to build something really cool 
And that's exactly what we've done. So what's the difference between Powerhouse GM and, say, a FanDuel? I know that wasn't a question that I told well, you I was going to ask you, but I'm just interested in yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like a FanDuel is – well, I'll talk a little bit about fantasy in a, in a few moments. But yeah. um, just like the, the difference between us and, and fantasy sports in general is, you know, in fantasy you've got the you know, quarterbacks and, and running backs and wide receivers, all these stats-producing players. And it's, and it's fun. I, hey, I, I've got four fantasy teams. I didn't, didn't stop playing fantasy because I invented this. Mm-hmm. But, um, but it's, not, it's not like being a real GM. It's, it's predictive. It engages you. It's cool. I love it. It's competitive with my friends. But what we do is you manage a full NFL roster, 53 guys, 90 during the offseason. Guys like you, who are offensive linemen, you, you're, you're part of the game too. You know, what my, actually, the other night when Jason Peters was injured uh, in the Eagles game, uh, he's the best draft choice I ever made. He was a tight end in Arkansas, and I would slip in my mind what year he came out. It was like the early 2000s. He's been around a long time. He was uh, undrafted, signed by the Bills, converted to a tackle. I took him in that draft in the seventh round because I liked him as a blocking tight end, and look at what he became. So, uh, you know, you really right. are down, you know, into the, the, the nitty-gritty, like the people who are really into really knowing rosters. That's, that's, that's our audience, man. That's, that's it. So I know – let's talk a little bit about, you know, I know you have 10,000 registered members right now. Is it just you or do you have others involved in your business? Well, it's, it's definitely my baby. Yeah. I have a great partner, Rich Libero, who used to run NHL.com, um, and he spent time on EA Sports' Madden team back in the day. And he's got, a, he's got a great feel for marketing and the sports media industry. We have a developer, uh, Marianne Segerman, who joined the team over the summer. Uh, she replaced our former developer, um, who was the one who you know, basically built the system over several years. And there's definitely been a learning curve as Marianne came on, but she's, she's hit her stride now um there have been a lot of different contributors over time um sort of on an ad hoc or informal basis especially some of our most passionate members on the site and i've also gotten a ton of great advice from some pretty smart advisors especially in the early days like i said it's uh, it's definitely my baby right well, that's a good thing. Nothing, you know, no one's going to treat it like um, the founder and the, the guy who had that aha moment. So, so talk about, so let's back it up a little bit. So you start it up, you get the programming and the development done. What successes have you had? And I know I mentioned the 10,000 members right now. Um, was it that a slow climb or did it happen pretty quickly? Well, um, I still remember like when the first few people signed up for the site, we like turned it on. I just wondered what was going to happen. And we started seeing, you know, people like emails that I didn't recognize from people in faraway places. And it was such a weird feeling knowing that total strangers were finding the site that I had created and signing up and engaging with it. And since then, it's actually we're, we're about to cross the 12,000 threshold. Wow. in terms of people um, creating accounts, confirming them on the site. And it's pretty awesome seeing the interest it's generated with basically no marketing effort at all. So is it a, is it a word of mouth, or are they able to just define you through Google searching? or? Yeah, well, we've done, you know, you know, I'd say no marketing. I mean, I have been conscious of, you know, putting out blog posts and some inbound stuff, um, you know, where people are finding us. We, we rank pretty highly in some... Um, the term is long tail keywords, you know, some very specific stuff um, like NFL GM simulation and stuff like that. That we, we you know, they're, they're finding us that way. Uh, there's a lot of word of mouth. Interestingly, we, we have like a pocket of passionate people in the UK that are like the most active on the site. It's crazy. There's like about two dozen guys who, uh, you know, who are over there in, in England and, and just love their NFL. Well, I, I could tell you by playing over there way back in the 90s, and I never saw more passionate fans. I mean, they I remember going over to uh, our trainer, and he had volumes and volumes of 
books that he would watch a game and he would take notes and save those notes. So when he went back and watched that same team play again, he'll sit there. I mean, that doesn't happen in the United States unless you're coaching. And it was just a fan. Well, I think, yeah, I think culturally it fits. I mean, if you think of the English, they, you know, with their gardens that they meticulously care for, and they have these very like um, these these really detail oriented hobbies. Uh, and I just think it fits. I don't know why. It just it, it, we, yeah. we have it, and I'm thankful for them because they've, uh, they've added a lot to the site. God bless the British. So, so talk a little, talk a little bit about challenges. You know, how what have you learned from these challenges and overcome? Yeah. So, where do I start? I mean, you know, I was a first time entrepreneur when when I started this business. Um, but I, I definitely say. Uh, the biggest thing is, you know, staying focused on our core mission of delivering the most realistic NFL GM simulation ever conceived. I went down a lot of dead ends early on. I spent time trying to figure out whether we were going to be a content company with a cool game attached to it. And, you know, the answer is no. We have content. We, we need to have content to support the game. But we're a game company. And it took me some time to figure that out. Mm. So just along the same lines, if you had to give yourself some advice right now, knowing what you know, going back to when you started, what would it be? I know it's a tricky question. Yeah. No, well, I mean, if I had a time machine, right? Yeah. Um, I would have said, you know, to de- as I kind of mentioned, as, as I would, uh, I would have said to dedicate all of our resources to building an excellent software platform. Yeah. Don't get distracted by trying to, having, trying to have commercial success too early before it's a viable offering. And I absolutely would have replaced our original developer sooner. Very talented guy. He built a great system. It's, it's pretty amazing in many ways. But he got distracted by other projects, and we, we didn't really move things forward as quickly as I envisioned. And I, I let that go on too long. Um, that's kind of where we are now. So We need to raise, uh, we need to raise a round of funding that will give us the resources to really build a special user experience. And I know what that looks like, but it's going to take some developer muscle. So what's your big vision? I mean, where do you, if, if you do get this round and you know, you're, you're putting those pieces in place, what's the big vision um, for this platform? Yeah, easy. Um, and I've mentioned this a couple of times. Um, I want powerhouse to deliver the most realistic NFL general manager simulation ever conceived. I want it to be a deeply immersive year-round experience that delights the hundreds of thousands of the most passionate NFL fans dream of running their own team. But only 32 people on the planet can have those dream jobs in right. real life. Powerhouse is the next best thing. Yeah. Well, well said. So what, what have you seen change since the time you started, you know, several years ago to where you are now? Has the, has the consumer changed? Has their consumption changed? Um, is the platform that much different now? Um, well, I think that's maybe really a question about the industry, right? And yeah. like we're, we're pretty unique. So like, I don't want to say we're an industry of one company, you know, nobody's, Nobody has no competitors. But, you know, when I think of what industry we're part of, I usually think of fantasy sports. And I used to say that the fantasy football space has really had little innovation since it all went all online over a decade ago. But then, well over a decade ago. But then along came daily fantasy games. And it's still traditional fantasy in terms of how the game is scored and stuff like that, and we talked about that a bit earlier. But it really showed that innovation in the space was possible and potentially highly lucrative. Daily Fantasy operates on a more limited engagement basis. You're going week to week. It's more ephemeral, more of a fleeting experience. We're on the other end of the spectrum. So if we were at a party, we'd be in like opposite corners like the, the girls and guys were in my fraternity in college. <laughs> um, our members are deeply and emotionally engaged over a very long period of time. I recently, you know, September... Uh, the first Saturday in September, September 2nd, was cut day in the NFL. And I had to make the hard choice to cut two players, Morgan Burnett, the Packers, and Brian Robeson on the Vikings, who I had originally drafted and had been on my team a combined 17 years. 
that goes back to when it was on my spreadsheet before we had, you know, our uh, our platform uh, up and running. And that was hard. It was upsetting on a kind of strange level for a game. Right. You become almost become emotionally attached to not just is it the process and you know you're rooting for these guys much more so because it it isn't a gambling platform. It's you're emotionally attached to these these players as you go because you're watching them. You're watching them. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I mean, think about like the the guys who are you know people who follow the draft and form opinions and say you know Mitchell Trubisky is going to be this or that. You know, they're, that's an opinionated group. And to give them a platform and a voice on which to say, you know, I mean, you, you can go to powerhousegm.com right now, and if you're not logged in um, with your own account, you can go to um, our, our draft prospects page, and you can see it's the, the, the page is under um, draft room and prospects. And you can see all of my rankings and my grades and my notes, my personal notes that I took last year. And like, I want to be right. You know, this gives me a, a you know, a, a soapbox to stand on and, and have people know that, you know, I was right or wrong. So when is the ideal time for, for someone to start? Could you jump in at any time or do you, you push them towards the combine right through the draft, obviously then, right through the season into the summer? Well, yeah, so we have, um, so I'll answer that question two ways. Um, First, I see seasonal spikes in the, like, late February, like, say, March, April, like, the the time leading up to the draft. We get a lot of Mm signups. And then we also, you know, August, September, time leading up to the season. That's like a a two-hump, what's it, a dromedary has two humps, not a camel. Right. Um, (laughs) We have two humps during the year, and and that's where they are. Um, but your question was, when should they sign up? And I thought about this um, a lot because I don't, it's kind of tough if somebody signs up in, let's say, June, and they, they, go, they kind of start with this team, but they can't participate in the draft, and the free agency is over. So it's kind of not a lot of decision-making before you know, or until the next draft cycle. So what we do is when you sign up, you're taken back in time until one week after the most recent Super Bowl. So if you sign up today, you're in like mid, I think it's February 16th or something like that. Mm-hmm. And that's where your team starts. And you can start with an expansion draft, which um, you know is kind of modeled after things that have been done in the NFL in the past where you pick players from other teams, but you, you know, Tom Brady's not available. Um, it's just sort of the backup guys. Um, and then you can go through the whole process including the draft, including free agency, and kind of get caught up. Um, I wanted people, it's you know, obviously a little unrealistic to be able to go back in time, um, but we put some, uh, some draft, like if you, it was last year, Dak Prescott, this time of year, was not available where he was drafted. We put some restrictions on um, what, what players are available based on you know, what we've seen. So if you want them, you've got to take them high. Right, um, but we wanted people to be able to be engaged, and I thought that was important. So, what's next now that you, if you're looking for, you know, the next step and the next level for the platform, you're looking for some, some partners, um, some funding. What is that ideal collaborative partner um, for your product? So this is this is what I hope is you know your audience is chock full of these people right right um so i've got a couple of different ways to answer that question i'll start with funding um because that's that's sort of my my front and center issue right now so we're absolutely looking for funding ideally between one and one and a half million dollars but beyond that i'd love to find an investor who brings more to the table than just money industry connections, developer resources, whatever helps us reach our goals. And certainly above and above all of it is a passion for the subject matter that is huge. Second, I'd love to find a technical partner, someone with developer resources who would commit to the project for an equity stake or something like that. Someone like that on board, our funding needs would go way down. Third, I've also long felt that an online media company looking to draw in NFL fans would 
would make a good partner. And I'm thinking of you know the path that Rivals.com took years ago. Mm-hmm. Rob, you also brought up a very interesting angle the first time we spoke. Why not have our game serve as a sort of lab for football-related courses and college sports management programs? We have um, a former NFL GM, 25 years in the league, I mean, a name you'd know, who runs a team on our site just for fun. And he once described Powerhouse as like a, like a flight simulator for would-be NFL general managers. And I've always loved, I've loved mm-hmm. that analogy. Right. So I definitely see an opportunity for us in the higher education, education space. I think so. I, I mean, lastly, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you, you go ahead. I, I, I just well, think it's, a, yeah, I, I think it's a perfect, perfect hands-on skill development. It's practical experience that they would get. And it's not just, it's not just the, um, the overall theory of it. It's the day to day. It's the analytics. It's the studying on the behavior of the market and what's happening. You know, this the salary cap piece of it that I think you mentioned is very important within you know your platform yeah. and understanding how that works and making decisions on players based on not just salary cap but future um, the upside on players. And you can't get that sitting in a classroom. And you could only get that by actually doing. And where else are you going to be able to do it? You can't just go in and work for a team. To me, I think that flight simulator um, example is 100% spot on. So um, the bigger play in this is obviously, and there, I mean, how many people you run into that would love to be an agent or what, love to be a GM for an NFL team or for baseball or for any, any sport? Um, but anyways, yep. so... Yeah, absolutely. And the only reason I have, I haven't really focused on that is just it's just numbers. You know, I mean, there are you know twenty five million or so people that play fantasy football, mm-hmm. and there's like I think you had the number last time. It's what twenty five thousand or so, right, in sports management programs. There's thirty thousand like students. That. Yeah, thirty thousand. Yep. Yeah. So it's it's just the numbers. But you brought up a good point that there might be. You know, A, it's a captive audience. B, it's, um, you know, the, the, the pricing might be quite different from what I, uh, you know, I look at, you know, as I have my consumer product here. Mm-hmm. So it's absolutely something that's on my radar. It just hasn't been my focus merely because of market size. Right. Well, it's it's all good stuff. So for those of you who are listening, um, powerhousegm.com is the platform. I got it up right now and I'm cruising through it. Um I just, it's an incredible, it's an incredible place, especially, I think you said it before, if you're, if you're a little bit of a super nerdy, you know, way beyond this, uh, the fantasy sports guy, and this is something that you have the attention span for and the passion for, this is it. So Chris, how do people get a hold of you? Yeah. So uh, my email is Barry CM, that's B-A-R-R-Y C-M as in Michael, 86, I'm sorry. I'm mean, almost giving you my personal. It's Barry CM at powerhousegm.com. Uh, my phone number is 914-419-2794. That is, uh, that is a mobile, so you can text me, call me. Um, and Or just go to the site, you know, check it out. There's uh, all kinds of contact us links there. There's a forum. There's all kinds of stuff. So I'm pretty easy to reach. I like to be reached. You know, I, I, I'm a pretty creative thinker, and I'm, I'm open to anything that's going to get us where we're going. So I, I like to have conversations. Um, I'm glad I picked up the phone and called you, and i um, glad I was able to uh, join you tonight. Yeah, absolutely. This is um, – it's, it's unique. It's different than um, any other guests I've had on, especially – you know, a lot of times it's just a concept that people have, especially with startups. Um, but this is a mature business. Uh, you have real followers. You have real passionate fans. You got 12 crazy dudes out in the UK, who, you know, who are you're their <laughs> folk hero. Um, so yeah. I, you, you really did a great job. I, I understand it even more so now um, the second time around of listening to you tell the story and um, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty darn cool. So um, thank you so much for your time and uh, for everybody out there listening, go check it out. It's a pretty good, cool platform and he's a really smart guy. So um, thanks again for your time, Chris, Chris Barry, CEO, founder, powerhousegm.com. You're listening to Rob Thompson. Thank you so much, Rob.
you you bet you 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 got you cut me in on my uh on my ending here but uh thanks again chris hold on for a second we'll talk when we jump off but this is rob thompson with sports business podcast interviews with influencers chris berry great guy great platform check it out thanks again have a good night